Welcome to Peacock Market Live. My name is David Jacobson, and welcome to episode number three. We made it to number three. And, uh, you know, before we get started, we have a very special guest today. But before we do that, I wanted to just tell you that the store is now open. The Peacock Market store is now open. So if you're looking for hats, T-shirts, decals, uh, and our decal is really, really special. It's um, It pays homage to the racers, the collectors, and the enthusiasts of the Porsche brand. And we put a lot of time and design effort into this. I think that you were going to really like that. And there's two different... Uh, uh, designs. One is like a gold leaf, beautiful, and one of them is a little more colored, if you prefer that way. But check out the store. There's other stuff in there as well. And obviously, what's on Peak Car Market right now, some exciting auctions. We're building momentum with a lot more cars, and we have a lot of cars uh, coming over the next uh, few days that I think are going to really make you very happy. Um, so without further ado, I want to just introduce my guest today. He is a tech guy. He's a Porsche guy. He's just a, an all-around car guy. But he also does extremely entertaining. He may not, he told me he doesn't really agree he's that entertaining, <laughs> but I think he is. Uh, and he helps people really to buy and navigate through the car buying process with really good information, really nicely delivered, even teaching people how to navigate through the build process of the Porsche. And we're really happy to have him with us today, Nick Murray. Thank you, David. It's a real thrill to be on. So uh, thanks for coming. No you know, problem. and I'm, I'm so happy that you actually are close enough where you could drive here in Connecticut. You know, and I, you had to get up pretty early in the morning today? Yeah, I was going to catch the ferry over, but uh, that didn't happen. So I drove all the way around. No traffic. It was fine. So the ferry, is the ferry running? It's very running, but it's uh, at a, um, a reduced, like I could have I could have got on 8 o'clock and got here way too early or 11 o'clock and got here too late. So. Gotcha. Well, you were right on cue. Yeah. But you're used to that, right? <laughs> yeah. pre pre precision and so forth. But, you know, one of the things that I, I wanted, to, just because this is the first time we're meeting in person, but I've I've learned a lot about you and, and how how I was introduced to you was actually through James Barry, Jim Barry, our GSM. Mm -hmm. uh, and he basically started following you years ago when you had, um, I guess, posted an, an issue you were going through with your a Porsche that you had purchased. Mm -hmm. Now, that's been resolved for many years. But mm -hmm. is that, how did you get started in this? Was that the catalyst that that was uh that certainly got me a lot more followers <laughs> there was a lot of interest in that situation but yeah i started my first very first youtube channels were just um actually uh, helping people with cameras people i was oh. I'm a, i love photography i've been a photographer my whole life i was even a professional photographer a short time uh, doing wedding photography and so people would always ask me photography advice and so i put it on a youtube video and that started it, and then I bought a 911, and I was uh, disappointed that the salesperson I dealt with buying my 911 mm. just gave me wrong advice. You know, he didn't know the car, and, you know, he has subsequently retired, and I've met a lot of Porsche salespeople that do know what they're selling, but he didn't. And I w I'm a technical person, I had a lot of technical questions about the various expensive options that I was buying on my 911, and when, then when I got it, I found... It's just put me wrong all the way. And so I did a couple of technical videos. Uh, this is how the active cruise control actually works. This is how this feature works, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how I started getting a following, yeah. spe specifically around Porsches. And that was also, uh, there were enough followers that when I did have a problem with my 911 and I was in disagreement with Porsche North America around it, I did a video that did get a little bit out of hand, <laughs> um, and that helped me resolve that situation, which was great. Yeah, I guess I guess the media has power. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I felt bad at the time. I didn't mean to damage the brand as as much as I was doing, but I did genuinely have the problems with the car, and yeah. I was frustrated that I wasn't getting, you know, it resolved. And so it worked out fine for me, um, and it worked out fine for everyone. I think it's just yeah, it was a, it was a bad situation, and I was. Pretty stressed about it, pretty disappointed about it, but yeah, Porsche came through in the end for me. You know, they did, and 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 you have you have really come back to Porsche and have given them a lot of publicity in these videos, and I think uh, yeah, I think it's I think they'll call it even at this point because yeah, yeah, I, I it's hard to know whether Porsche loves me or hates me because you know I spend a lot of time, all my time, helping people buy their cars because I want them to have a good experience yeah. because I do love the brand, but at the same time. I'm going to bash things that are bad and I'm going to be straight about it. So I don't always just pump the brand. I'll say, uh, this is nonsense, this is overpriced, this is, this, you should not bother with this. 
um, which I'm sure they don't want to hear. But at the same time, I'm putting a lot of effort into selling cars for them. Yeah, there's no doubt. And one of the videos that I watched of yours, actually, I believe, was the the uh, the, the Taycan. And oh, yeah. um, it was, you started off by saying, this is not going to be fluffy. It's going to be real and yeah. raw. And 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 I, I'm going to tell you that at the end, I watched it. It was, it, was, it was all about how great the car was and wonderful. But you really did talk about some things that people that are going to drive it need to know, want to know, and should know about. Yeah. So I give you kudos for that, man. You, you can't always ride that perfect, uh, oh, they're not going to give me a car to review or this, this, somebody's not going to appreciate this. And... You know, even we had Ron Emery on last year who's building cars that people can give him a hard time about. We, yeah. we talked about yeah. that briefly. Yeah. But at the end of the day, authenticity wins. Yeah. Well, it's just like the product that you guys are promoting here. You know, it's better to that people know the good and the bad. Yes. And you'll sell more if you do that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And let's talk about that for a minute. I know you had purchased a 928 on there, and you and I had conversations mm -hmm. about some things you found out um, after the purchase and so forth. And it's interesting, and I went back and looked. One of the things I always tell people is the information is there. Yeah. In, in a couple of ways. When you look at the Carfax, and the Carfax shows that the car had no inspection for 15 years, yeah. or there was... A, a thousand mile jump in mileage <laughs> <laughs> in the last 15 years, yeah. it calls for some questions. That's right. and, and what's really interesting is the people that, you don't need to be, you know, Jacques Cousteau, you know, mm. Cousteau, you don't need to be a, a great investigator, but you do need to look at the information. That's right. You know, not just the pictures. And, and you really need to do a due diligence. And if you educate yourself, take your time, look at the information, ask questions yeah. privately or globally on the thread, which is always helpful, you're, you're really yeah. you're gonna do pretty good. That's right. And and that's on me. You know, I brought that car. I was, oh, I love the color of that car. And I got carried away when if I'd really spent a bit more time looking through the detail, I wouldn't have been as surprised when I got the car as mm. I was. Um, and so you did right. It 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 you need to spend the time researching yeah. because you can find all the information you need if it's provided on the website, which it often is. That's that's key. Yeah. That's yeah. key. And and the same way, the reason why, again, we wanted to invite you on the show yeah. is because I see what you do. You're taking, you're giving information to help people, consumers make good decisions, and that's needed in a world where there's a lot of trickery going on in every way to, to confuse people. So we, our philosophy here at PCAR Market is really, if you're going to fool someone, you best not go through us. There's mm. easier ways, easier platforms to fool yeah. people. Yeah. It doesn't mean we're always perfect and we catch every little thing, but we put enough information, enough enough of the format allows to filter out that stuff. So I appreciate that. And, um, you know, it's uh, uh, the, 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 at the end of the day, it's always research and, and do what you have to do to make yourself feel comfortable. Would you agree? Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, why do you think people watch you? You know, I've got no idea because I find myself incredibly annoying. <laughs> I have to edit my own videos and it's a painful uh, process. Yeah. But I hope that I'm helping people. And I know that I get a lot of feedback. I get a lot of emails every day saying, I really appreciate you helping me with this. And I was That's great. I was totally confused. I'm buying this. I'm buying this. But um, I was overwhelmed by the choices. And I watched your video and, and it helped me. I reduced the price of my Porsche. $10,000 just taking out options that you pointed out were just not for me. So that's, that's why I do it, and, um, and, I, and I hope that's why people watch. Um, sometimes I, and it's interesting, when I get to meet people that watch my, my YouTube channel, everybody has a different reason for watching. Yeah. Some, some, people, some people watch because they are interested in cars and they're interested in Porsches, and, and that's great, and that's the bulk of them. But some people watch because they just <laughs> find me amusing for whatever reason as well. You know, my channel's small, so... Well, uh, I, listen, if, just so everyone knows, small in, in, the, in the pool of big, <laughs> of large, because yeah, right, I think yeah. you're, you're, you're probably getting close to 200,000 subscribers, and quite frankly, yeah. that's a lot of people. Yeah, it's... In the YouTube world, that's still a small, medium channel, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a... What I like is that it's a committed group. You yes, know, I've, I've got it seems a, that way. I've got a core group of particularly Porsche enthusiasts that are very supportive of me and 
will, will back me on everything. And so I really appreciate yeah. the support that my followers give me and, and, it, and it makes me keep going. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we appreciate the support they give you because when you mentioned our name, I am. <laughs> um, I, we, we, do you know what happened? No. So we were, uh, Brad was home and Brad sends me a text. He said, How, why did 700 people uh, in the last 10 <laughs> minutes sign up for Peacock Market. Market? See, if you go on to our, our end of auction, yeah. um, you have to sign up to view the results. Right, yes. Or else you can't, obviously it's fair, you can't yeah. see the results without at least just sign. You don't have to put a credit yeah. card in, you just have to sign up. And I said, I have no idea. We have a, we have hundreds and hundreds of people um, a day signing up for Peacock because we're in a major growth spurt right now. So, but That's this right. but no, but this was over an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and all, so after a little bit of investigating, Brad was like Nick Murray put up a video, and on the video he said, "I purchased my car from Peacock Auctions." By the oh, yeah, way, yeah, yeah. you I, got your, my our I name got the wrong. name wrong. Sorry, you got the name wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I put the put, yes. the, put the, it up to correct that. So. Amen. Yeah. Because <laughs> that shows the dedication. That even shows more of the dedication yeah. of your people <laughs> they were willing to research and find out <laughs> yeah. the right place to go but what was amazing to me is 700 800 900 a thousand people immediately to see what you bought yeah went on to Peacock market logged in put their username or registered and uh wanted to see what nick Murray and then i got drove. flooded i got <laughs> flooded i must have got i don't know two or three hundred <laughs> emails that day going you brought this and then they pick a green yeah. Any, they picked all the different green cars that have been sold over the last six yeah, months, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then obviously to confuse everyone, because that's what happens in my life. We don't have, how, how many green 928s do we ever sell? Not many. Yeah. Two days later, I somebody <laughs> submits a green 928 to confuse it. Is this the one Nick Murray bought? Or is this? So it was, it was interesting. It was, it was very nice to see your people looking yeah. to see what you did and uh, that's a testament like you said you know there's bigger there's there's always grander but but authenticity and and, and a really uh, a great group of of um of sh sh uh, like-minded individuals really yeah. sharing it's a, hobby. it's a nice size you know my channel's yeah. a nice size i it's it's small enough that i feel that i can interact yeah still with my followers and people that are interested in the subjects that i cover uh, once you get to a large like i'm friends with large um YouTubers as well, um, Jason I'm friends with from Engineering Exchange and a few others, Doug mm. DeMiro and so forth. And their channels are so huge yeah. that it's a different world for them. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah I, would imagine, I would imagine so. So uh, are you an exhibitionist? I mean, come on, just give me the deal. I, I put up a video, I see you running naked, and then I put up another video <laughs> and I see you running naked. I'm like, is it just by chance that I saw you running yeah. naked on your videos twice? I don't actually spend a lot of time <laughs> naked, but I, I did once once or yeah. twice get accidentally caught being naked in my backyard because uh, the neighbors really can't see into my backyard yeah. and <laughs> my security camera is always running. And so it'll send me a photo of any person it sees in the yard. Oh, so you, you so if I happen to chase the dog out or do something in the yard where I'm naked, so it sends that photo, I think, oh, that's a funny photo. Yeah. So then I put it on my <laughs> Instagram channel and so then it started as a sort of a running joke okay. that Nick's always naked in his yard type of thing. So I, I ham it up a little bit. You well, just, of course, oh, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was funny. And I like when you said, I run like a girl, whatever you said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I rewound that. It was actually very funny. But yeah. you know what? It, it's, you're, it makes you human, which obviously, yeah. you know, you're, you seem like a really nice guy and authentic. And I, that's why it, it's successful. But stuff like that, really, people enjoy, right? People enjoy yeah. that. Yeah. You, I, know? I, I, you even I, had your mother on that episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make it even more weird, yeah. but it was great. Well, it's fun, <laughs> quick side story on my mother, who's, she is, she is a larger than life character. And uh, she, for many years, had a hotel in New Zealand. Mm. And she's always naked as well. And she, would, she, she sleeps naked and she lived in the, in the house that was the main office of the hotel. And sometimes if there was a customer that came very early and rang the bell to the front desk, she would forget to put any clothes on <laughs> and she'd run out to the front desk. And so she was known as the, as the naked woman that owns the hotel. So, so only fair that you carry that's on. That's right, I'm carrying right. on the tradition. That's right, in <laughs> yeah. America. That's right. Multi-continental. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's very funny. But um, so just to get back into the cars, you know, what was your first car? What was your first set of wheels? Oh, nothing exciting and not something that you... Usually they're not exciting. Yeah, the first not... Set, but, um, my very first car was a car called a Ford Laser Gear, which is a, actually a, uh, it's very similar to a Mazda 323. 
1990 Mazda 323, mm. but it's a rebadged Mazda in New Zealand and okay. Australia. And it's called what? I'm sorry. Uh, a Ford Laser Gear. Oh, gear. Yeah, okay. yeah. And G A G H I A. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it was just a little hatchback car, and I loved it. Uh, but I, I wanted to get a more enthusiastic car, so I sold that after a year and bought my first enthusiast car, which was an Alfa Romeo 33, which, like any Alfa, and I think every car enthusiast needs to own an Alfa and experience <laughs> the nightmare oh, yeah. that is owning an Alfa. Absolutely. Um, it was a fun car to yeah. drive, but, yeah, the lights didn't work at night, the wipers didn't work when it rained, the... The door locks would go up and down until it's character, it actually yeah, yeah, it builds, yeah. builds character <laughs> owning one of those cars. So that, that was fun. That, that is so funny. And, yeah. and, and so Porsche now, what part of your life, who and how did Porsche get introduced to you? You know, I was a Porsche fan when I was just a youngster with freckles. I have always loved the shape of the 911. So I, I'd always dreamed of owning a 911. I never thought I'd get to the point in life where I would, but I mm. hoped that I would. And I didn't care what model 911. It could be the trashiest one ever. Um, but the first time I drove a 911 was actually my ex-girlfriend's new husband allowed me to drive his car because I fixed his computer. Okay. And he didn't like me at all, obviously. <laughs> um, but because I'd done him this favor, he let me drive his... Uh, it was a, a 993 and it was a... A mind-blowing experience for me. What a way yeah. to start. Yeah, yeah. What a way to start. Yeah. Nothing better, right? Oh boy. Um, and so, yeah. Was, that wasn't the black episode with the black car. There was an episode you drove a black nine nine three. That no, was no, obviously no. that was that yeah. was many years yeah. later. Yeah. But that so that's where the affinity for the nine nine three came. Yeah. When yeah. you were driving that car, well, you know, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. I've driven that car. I felt the way the pedals go down like this. I found that you know, I I I'd driven and the dash and it just stuck in my mind. And so one it's day, very memorable. Yeah. I remember my first experience was at a 964, and I'll never forget going down what's over here, the viaduct in Roslyn, and that the way it went over those bumps and the way it felt yeah. with the sound and the smell, it was, yeah. it was a surreal experience. I've never gotten into a car that I've driven. It was either something cool about it, like you get into a certain car, it's loud, or this one handles decent, but that car just had all the senses going on at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah It's very right. special. Yeah. Very yeah, it really is. And uh, so uh, I'm, I don't want to guess. I don't want to guess about the 993 being your favorite Porsche, but what is your favorite right now? All of them. I don't care. Air-cooled, water-cooled. I don't care. Yeah, fly, it's, a hard, it's a hard question because there's so many great. I know. It's very there's difficult. There's so question. many great. And, and I think a lot of people would jump straight to like a Carrera GT because that is such a magic model. Mm. Um, but honestly, yeah, I think... Just because it was my first ever, I would, I'd just like a plain Jane, green, <laughs> uh, yeah, 993. Yeah, it's so funny to hear you say a plain Jane 993. That car is so wonderful and so special that yeah. the word plain Jane almost is so, right? Yeah. It's just such an unfair word for that car. Yeah. But in that world, the plain Jane Porsche 993 is glorious. Yeah. But there are so many to choose from. There's, There's so many oh. great Porsches. So how would you compare the 993 to the 964. Do you have any comparison that, yeah, you know? Yeah, the 964, I mean, they're more similar than dissimilar, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, the 964 is a, obviously, it's the choice of cars for everybody that's modding, you know, these singers and mod, all these these cars that are that are being turned into, you know, hot rods and so forth. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. For good reason. Mm -hmm. It's a solid base, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's a fun car and it's visceral. Yeah, and how do you feel about, you know, talking about that, how do you feel about these cars being turned into hot rods? Are you a purist? Do you have any type of, like, some people get really upset. Some people do. You know, and, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sure you come across every kind, but um, how do you, what do you feel about the hot rods compared to this, the, the factory cars? So I've got no problem with that. I really, you know, I, like I'd hate to see a car that is in perfect condition mm. then wrecked. That's sad. Yeah. But a car that is not in good condition, um, being turned into something special, something a little different, why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, and again, just talking back with Rod Emery, uh, our last episode is, 
he's I think we can all agree to the same thing that if a car has its original motor and it has its transmission and it needs a little work and then you really need to be true and you mm -hmm. need to bring that car back to life I think anyone would be upset about that but if a car doesn't have its uh, an engine or it's been in a semi wreck and it's you know the longitudinals are okay and the yeah. car is, is can be brought back to life you might as well that's right be creative, have fun. There's all, there's all different types in this world, and this, we all have a different perspective. There are a million different types of Porsches out there, and this is just another iteration. Put a little bit of modern with a little bit of classic, yeah. and you get something special. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where people that have that mind, you, you, you have the ability to... I mean, when you look at the 356s by Rod Emery and look at Singer and Gunther Works and, uh, you know, Workshop 5001 and on and on and on, there's amazing stuff coming out of there. I know. Right? It's you almost it. like it's almost like the manufacturers. We want them to fight to get us the best product in the world. Now we have these these uh, boutique and larger customization shops that are that are fighting to give us the greatest of that. That's right, and it's the best of old and new, and it makes for an an amazing piece of machinery. Yeah, it really does. Very, it's very exciting. So, where do you stand on electric cars? Now, I know you you did the the, the Taycan and yeah. the review, but in general, are you someone that is like, oh, we're going to lose our petrol, the naturally the um, combustion motors, or are you like, let's let's go for it? Yeah, I'm somewhere in between. I'm I'm perfectly fine. Like, as soon as the electric Macan comes out, I'm getting one, and it's going to break down for sure on me, but that's fine. Uh, you know, for you know, I would for for commuting and for day-to-day -day driving. It's there's nothing wrong with owning an electric car, and you know they are a simpler machine. And so for the bulk of the driving world, like not everybody's like you and I, yeah. which are enthusiasts on sports cars. The bulk of the world are just want to get from A to B, and an electric car is just going to simplify the world. You know, um, and so I'm a big supporter of electric cars. Sure, I don't want to see. I don't want to see the thrill of having the sound and the visceral experience of a sports car disappear because of electric cars, but I don't think it ever will. We'll always have them, won't we? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. and do you believe that there's a place for a, not, I'm not going to say a visceral driving experience with an electric car, maybe that's pushing it, but is there a place for sports cars and, and fun and exciting cars in the electric world, do you think? I think so. Yeah, I've got a friend who runs a YouTube channel, uh, Out of Spec Motoring, and <laughs> <laughs> he spends his time destroying electric cars on the racetrack and having fun with them, like taking off the track's control and, and drifting electric cars around the track and driving with him. Anyone that wants to spend five minutes with him, you'll see how much fun an electric car can actually be. Really? Yeah. So what is he, it's, is that what he does, just electric cars? His, his channel is just electric cars, but he's a good driver and he uh, enjoys drifting cars and, and taking them to them. He has a, he has a little uh, e-smart, the little short, smart car electric as well that he off-roads and does crazy things with but yeah he's convinced me that you can have a lot of fun in electric car oh, yeah. believe it or not yeah I, I would if you take anything to an extreme listen I love the thought of motorcycle driving with spikes on your tires in the snow mm. ice in the ice the ice <laughs> racing yeah. yeah I dream of doing that one day I mean you could take anything and you could just make it bring it to its 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 limits and have a great time with That's it right. right yeah just life you just have to embrace it that's why I'm I don't knock anybody that wants to have a we put up a Chevy motor in a Porsche yeah the the comments and I, I wanted oh, to talk that about drive that. people nuts <laughs> nuts I, I can't believe how personal yeah you'll get death threats <laughs> I, I mean it, thank God I didn't build it because they, they know where we're located but this we put up a few of them over the year over the last 18 months that we've we've been in P car market and one was an RWB recently and one of them was just a really well, there was two other ones really beautifully beautifully uh, look, uh, looking car with a, a small block and you see people it's just so funny to watch what happens like what a gorgeous car oh my <laughs> god let's kill the guy who built this it's just amazing to me but it's someone's interpretation it's like. People take it so personal, isn't it? Do you find that on your channel that you get a lot of uh, of strong-minded individuals that comment about crazy things? Yeah, and and you know I'm guilty of it myself. Yeah, you know I'll get on. Sometimes I'm trolling the Porsche Facebook page because of the ridiculous things get posted on there, and 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 put my own, you know, give give some of the stuff that I get every day back. Back out into uh. the ether as well. Um, yeah, it's kind <laughs> of fun. Do, so you do this while you do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. So I, you know, I, one of the things about my channel, yeah. I never ever knock people that are passionate and uh, 
even if they're completely wrong, I th even if I think they're completely wrong, I welcome the criticism, I welcome whatever, because that's part. You know, everybody's a little different. Everybody's sure. got a different... of course. Yeah, bring it on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, but it's not always easy. It's not always easy because, uh, you know, I'm a passionate person and people that know me, I, I'm driven by passion. And, uh, and, you know, when you have a lot of passion, you take things very personal. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. I know a lot of people that have different, they're, they're, listen, I'm not in the public eye compared to a lot of other people, but um, it's not easy. And you, there must be times when you shut that computer down and you say, all right, enough. Like, is there ever a time as a person that you just had enough of, of, of negativity or anything like that? I've been lucky in that a lot of the, ne <laughs> firstly, a lot of the negativity, negativity that comes my way is pretty hilarious. Mm. So I turn it around and I read it out on my channel and I use it to my advantage. Good for you. So I often do uh, videos which are just about reading nasty things people said about me because yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it becomes hilarious because I don't really take myself too seriously because I'm not a serious person. Well, good and, for you. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, and so I'm happy and I would hate it if everybody had my taste and saw the world my way. The world's a better place with everybody having different opinions. Uh, but no, so I've never, I guess I've always felt confident in myself and understood that there's always going to be a percentage of people that just hate me for the sake of hating me, mm. and that's fine. Because you know what? Those people are my most ardent fans. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, like I'll post a video up and it'll get four or five dislikes in the first five seconds uh, before anyone's watched it. And, you know, it'll get thousands of likes over time, but... There's a few people that just dislike me so much. They are committed enough that they will watch for the thing that says, Nick's put up a new video, and they'll go on straight away and dislike it. Yeah. And I appreciate that sort of commitment yeah, to hating yeah, me. Yeah. Yep. Well, you need to have that perspective. <laughs> and I, I think you genuinely do appreciate that because you just know that there are different people with different opinions, and that's what makes us... Go, that's what makes the world go around. That's what makes us interesting exactly. and not boring. Yeah. I'll share something funny with you. You may, you may get a kick out of. So some, along those lines, you know, we have, I watched the video that you put up about the silly um, t questions that you get from your company's uh, oh, yes. uh, yeah. tech support. Yep. And I was laughing so hard because <laughs> uh, I want to hear a, a few of those. And I know that you, 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 you read some of them and I was laughing, but yeah. the stuff that we get, um, and I'll tell you something funny. We ha the other day we had a gentleman who he makes a lot of comments who were named nameless, obviously comment, 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 a hundred, 200 comments, 300 comments over a six month period on every car has something to say on just about everything. And then he also bids, like about 10% of what the car's worth on, almost every, on all the cars. <laughs> so he never wins anything. Never wins anything. Yep. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he wins a car. The gentleman lowered the reserve. Oh. He never expected to win the car. So he got it super cheap. He wins, no. Oh. As soon as it ended, he called up and says, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> can you... That is just a tiny example of the stuff that can make you lose your mind. Yeah. So he's wow. he knows everything. He's he's he, listen. He's probably a really nice it doesn't guy. Doesn't follow through. He, he follows through on all of his stuff that doesn't necessarily have to go too far in following through. But when he won that car and he didn't he didn't take the car, you know. And again, we take that very serious. When somebody wins a car, it's a contractual agreement, and it's yeah. there's no joke there. But we started laughing. Yeah. It was just like so appropriate, you yeah. know. And um. That's commitment. That's, that's commitment. <laughs> uh, and I've got, I've got followers the same way that yeah. critique every video that I make and then write me an email telling me all of the mistakes that I made yeah. in that video. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and what's annoying is that they've often made mistakes themselves in pointing out my mistakes. Yeah. Or well, well, they've just got something completely wrong and what can you do? But I, pr I appreciate the commitment to watching my channel. And Absolutely. And you know what? Sometimes the information, the criticism is good. Oh, totally. You know, especially yeah. if we do a post on social media and the guy's like, like, there's a different way to say things. One guy's like, by the way, I think you may, a, a private, this is, this is how it works. You can either do a private message that says, you may want to take a look at the engine displacement. It could be wrong. Yeah. Or he'll do it publicly and say, can you check the engine displacement? Or what are you guys, idiots? <laughs> You're supposed to be <laughs> Porsche experts. How in the world do you put that up? It's the same same information. Same information. Three different people <laughs> trying to play. And it's very, it's, 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 it, yeah. you have to laugh and you have to say, again, this is what makes the world go around. It's interesting. And then, and I'm just going to share one other one with you is we have a, another one, which is one of my favorites is the car is a $50,000 car, let's say. And then somebody puts a bid of $100. Yeah. 
and somebody makes a comment and says, how in the world can you put a $100 bid on a $50,000 car? And then five minutes later, somebody makes it a, a $30,000 bid and somebody says, why in the world would you jump so high? <laughs> somebody <laughs> this, just did 100. Why did yeah, you jump to 30? Yeah, yeah. Because the car's 50. Why would I not? Yeah. And again, everyone has different theories on bidding. Some people wait to the end, which most people do. And some people will put a... Uh, we had a car that got a a, a hundred uh, a ninety a nine hundred ninety six dollar bid on a three hundred thousand dollar car. It's just the style. He wanted to get involved and he wanted to get going, and we appreciate that. We really do. We think that's perfectly. But the comments that follow that stuff is just uh, so funny. Yeah. And I the human nature you get you deal with that all the time. Yeah. I'm I'm sure. But so when you get these tech questions, did your did your company have a problem with you doing that? By the way, or it was it was so I didn't name the company. Right. And, right. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and um. Pretty senior at the company, and yeah, I was careful to, I was keep careful to keep it anonymous and not and not have any uh, backlash with the company because yeah, it's got it could be any company that those yeah of course of course and you did it classy and yeah. and and I, I I walked away with the same thing I don't yeah. know where you worked and, yeah. and and whatnot but I love the way you share those little the things in your office oh, yeah. and uh, yeah. you know it's just you feel uh, there's a need and they really appreciate this I know that your viewers you know when you when you connect with them on a personal level like that and start showing them where does Nick sit all day yeah you know that it it means something to a lot of them well you know that's it that's what that's what people um, sometimes don't understand about YouTube. The reason YouTube is so successful is that it's a personal connection. And sorry, there's noises from my dogs trying to beat down the door. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have to bring them on. Yeah, here. we might bring yeah. them on. Yeah. Um, it, and and you have to understand that if you're running a YouTube channel, it is a personal connection with your viewers. And so don't be upset if that personal connection isn't what you expect. Yeah. Um, and so I, I've noticed when whenever I have a chance to meet a group of my viewers, the th the reason they want to come and meet me is they want to know, number one thing they want to know, is Nick really the same person in real life that he is on YouTube? And I try to be yeah. that person. I don't, I'm, I'm a weird guy, let's face it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're all weird in our own way. Yeah, of course. And I don't try and hide it. And that, that maybe puts some people off, but at the same time, it really connects Absolutely. with other people. Yeah. And so... I don't hide my weirdness. I've got a stuffed toy gorilla that I talk to and I've got my dogs <laughs> and all it. the other weird it. stuff that yeah. I do. I may as well put it out there because, oh, yeah. you know, why not? Why yeah. not? Yeah. Listen, I've worked with so many different people. I mean, I love it. The quirkiness, you yeah. know, it's even like a car. You look at the quirkiest cars in history, they're worth the most money today. Exactly, yeah. You know, so I love the individuality that people share and, and it's, it's really awesome. So uh, we want to meet, the, we have to bring the dogs on. And then I have 10 quick questions that sure. we'll do at the end that really just people get to know a little bit more about you by maybe uh, you answering questions that would not normally be asked of you. So you want to grab the dog quickly sure, now? Sure, I'll grab it. So we'll just keep the camera on me for a second and um, and we'll let uh, Nick grab his uh, puppies. And I, I, I'm a dog. I love dogs. We have a dog. And these are really, these are really great dogs, man. I'll tell you. And one of our, one of the guys that works here lost his pug recently and he... I, t I told Nick, I told you when you walked in, he was going to fall in love with your, with your little guys, and he did. So now, introduce... So, this is Tui. She's my six-and-a-half-year-old French bulldog. Hey, Tui. And what's, what's great about... Smudge! Oh, shit. He's falling over the lights. Sorry. Tui is ripping down the camera. This is what you talk about, real yeah. live stuff. Is it still straight? So you, you're going to correct? You're going to fix it? We're good? It's good? So Smudge was trying to disrupt the show by knocking the camera <laughs> over, and it was just about to hit John in the head, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and Nick went over and saved his life. No, actually. It's classic Smudge, because cl Tui never causes any problem. She's the French bulldog, and she's so clever and well-behaved, and just, you know, I had a disproportionate expectation of dogs after owning her for six years because she's so well behaved oh. and then to get this nightmare <laughs> who's he, Who, i love him to death but who's falling asleep right in your head right <laughs> yeah, here on. yeah but every right. day is some drama with this animal now what kind of dog he's a boston terrier what a beautiful dog yeah he's he's crazy smudge hey smudge how you doing <laughs> hey smudge are you a porsche guy ah i got a wink i got a wink <laughs> so here we're going to do the 10 questions all right again just 
Hit me. Uh, they're, they're not gonna. They're not gonna be awkward or weird, but they uh. are gonna tell a little bit more about you. Okay. So the simple ones here: stick or PDK. One car, one choice. Which do you prefer to drive? I do prefer the stick. Okay. We're talking about movies now. A horror or comedy? Um. Hmm. A comedy normally. Normally, but yeah. you like horrors as well. Horror yeah, I like movies a bit well? of horror. Oh, yeah. ah, okay. All right. Driving or flying? Oh, You're flying. Clearly. Oh, flying. Flying ah. is so much easier. Ah, I yeah. Would. So that's a special moment for you to be up there and... Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I fly myself. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, but, yeah. So you... Yeah. I can't even imagine. I, I was in an aeroplane, a private plane, a prop plane, I should say, one time, and I, I had control of the um, of the controls. Yeah. And they turned the motor off and we were kind of... I glide and I've, I've never experienced something yeah. like that. Now, helicopter is totally different though, yes? Yeah, yes, yes. I mean, you're kind of... If you're not spinning, you got a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> well, so. yes, yeah. You can cut the engine in a helicopter and still glide. It's called an auto rotation, yes. And then, the, but the, so it'll the the, 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 the wind spin. passing through the rotors will keep the rotors at an operational speed, and you can use the momentum of the rotors to to cushion your landing. Really? So yes. if you lose power on a helicopter, you're not doomed. You're actually safer to lose power in a helicopter than in an aeroplane. Serious? Yep. Very interesting. Yep. I feel better. Yeah. I feel better. Um, vintage cars, vintage Porsche, hot rod or stock? Which do you prefer? Uh, I think I'm going to go with stock. Okay. Because it's traveling back in time. It's like a time machine. Yeah. 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 And that's okay. what's special. Okay. Range Rover or Defender? Ah, oh, uh, Defender. Defender. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're just that boxy shape. Oh. <laughs> it's so cool. I've got a neighbor that's got one and I, I lust after it. Yeah. And you love those, those uh, resto mod ones? That yeah. They, oh, aren't yeah. they beautiful? Yeah. I love those. What's your favorite car color? I'm a, I'm definitely a dark green guy. Dark green, yeah, yeah. Dark green. Um, Italian or Indian food? Uh, Indian. Oh, yeah. Brad was right. Yeah. He didn't even know you. He said he's gonna like <laughs> yeah. Indian food. How did he know that? Yeah. Find out why. I, I lived in England for a, a few years, and uh, while well, I've been to India, and uh, Indian food in India is excellent, <laughs> the English somehow do amazing. Well, Indians in in England really? just. Blow you away with your Indian. Oh, that's yeah. good to know. So, communication, texting or phone call, which do you prefer? Oh, never phone call. Ah. Who, who <laughs> ever takes a phone call anymore? That is a nightmare. Strictly text for you. Text, yeah. Dogs, what's Tui and Smudge's favorite car? Do they have different favorite cars or do... You know, as soon as I got that 928 for some reason, I find them sleeping in that car whenever they get the opportunity. They love that car for some back, reason. The back. In the back. They just sit in the back in, uh, in the garage. They'll just wander out there and sleep in the back. I don't well, know. It why. Is, well, it's kind of a unique. Well, because yeah. it's like eight. It's like a foot from the glass. Yeah. It's kind of like they a love it. cozy. Well, though, whenever I've had a 911, Tui does like sitting on that uh, above the engine oh, there. there. She go. does. There yeah. You go. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And Apple or Android? Uh, I'm an Apple guy, yeah. Okay. Although I, I'm happy with either way. Either uh, way. Being a tech guy, I'm. I, I believe there should be competition for Apple. Oh, so, of course. Yeah. So if of you're course. an Android person, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. What else do we need to possibly know about you? Exactly. <laughs> Nick, I want to thank you so much for taking the uh, the, the trip here. Thank um, you, David. And you really a pleasure to speak with, and I wish oh, you all been... the best with your channel. Thank you very much. And it's we'll been a joy. Future. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. PeteCallMarket.com.